averages. Time averages. Uh, if you look at the figure here on the side, you'll find that we have some samples from a random process. When we say time averaging, we, what, what we mean is that we're going to consider um, a period of time, for example here, from minus t up to t. We will evaluate the function and then divide by that time. So because we are integrating over time, <coughs> it's called time averaging. So the time average, the time average is going to be defined the following. A time average, you will take one of the samples, a small x of t, so let's take this one. We're going to evaluate the average over time. So we integrate from minus t to plus t and divide by uh, the integration period, which is here 2t. We use a instead of e, the expectation. Remember, if you recall before, we, be, we have been using e, something like this, expected value of the random process x of t, capital X. But now we are using small x of t. So going back to where we are here, this is a defined the time average. If you compare this with the mean or ensemble average, the ensemble average was defined to be given the PDF or the probability, then we weight the values x by that probability and then we average over all possibilities. Remember that the mean or ensemble average or ensemble average of uh, a random process is function of time in general. We can also find the time autocorrelation. We, had, we have defined the autocorrelation, which is the expected value of x times x at a different time. Here, the, the time autocorrelation, instead of the expected, we use a to reflect the time. We take one of these ensembles, we compare it with a shifted version of it by multiplication and integration. So here, this is called the time average. And if you notice here, we're using script R instead of the RXX we use for autocorrelation. We can also do the same for the case of cross-correlation. So the time cross-correlation, we had now two different samples from two different random processes, X and Y. We have small x and small y, and then we, we correlate them over time. Remember again, we have script x, uh, x, y. That's the cross correlation between x and y. Now, from the time averages, from the time averages, we look at the concept of ergodicity. Now, why we care about ergodicity? What's so important? What's special about ergodicity? Having ergodic process means we can study sample across time instead of studying many samples. Okay, so I'll take one of the samples and study them. Now, we can have mean ergodic, which means that the mean of one sample is equivalent to the mean of the random process itself. Uh, I can think of the example of the, of the average weight of students at, at the university, for example. So if you pick one student, Okay, and you look at his weight as function of time. Okay, then uh, the weight will be fluctuating uh, around his average, like going up, going down. He might gain weight. Okay, this student, if you find his average, you get small x. You get sorry, you get small x bar. Just small x bar here. Now, if you look at the average of all students, you get another student here, a third student, a fourth student. The example of weight is not a good example because the, the weight of one student might be very different than the weight from other students. So taking x1, x2 here. So we cannot take one of the students as a representative of the weight of all students at the university at large. But in cases, for example, if you look at the example of the average temperature, Maybe we can use one student as a representative of all students, all human beings in the university. So in that case, it's mean ergodic. Taking one student, taking small x bar is like the, the average of the entire process. Now, if you continue with the correlation ergodic, again, if the, if, if the time autocorrelation equal to the uh, correlation of the random process, we call it time or we call it correlation ergodic. If both these conditions are true, which means mean ergodic and correlation ergodic, then we can say it's just ergodic. So when we say ergodic, what we mean is two things at the same time. Now, 
We can also go for joint ergodic uh, random processes. If they are joint ergodic, means it means that they are individually ergodic, and their cross correlation in time is just like their cross correlation for all the random process. So to sum up, an ergodic process allows you to study one sample instead of studying all the samples.